Um, we are moving on to uh, the panel discussion to elaborate further on these matters and also the matters of the European capitals of culture. And I will now invite some important stakeholders from the past and present European capitals of culture to the floor to reflect on the Sami involvement and effects 10 years after UMO 2014. Uh, we have with us uh, Lars Magne Andreasen, the board member of Bode 2024 and former director of the Lule Sami Cultural Center Ardan, and he will be with us digitally and have a brief presentation in the beginning of the panel. Then I would like to invite to the floor uh, Maria Harnes Bad, coordinator for Sami programming content in Bode 2024. Thomas Wenström, are you here? Yeah. Former chair of the cultural committee of UMO municipality back in 2014 and during the process of, of uh, becoming a European capital of culture. Mikael Lindblad, who you met already, representing uh, Sokia, uh, and he was the former chair of the Sokia UMO Sami Association before and during the UMO 2014. And also, um, back to the floor, um, Michelle Lavallee, uh, who you just met uh, from the Indigenous Waste and Curatorial Initiatives Department at the National Gallery of Canada. So I think we'll just enter the floor, all of you. We'll have to do some restructuring of the, of the furniture. And we will hear first from uh, Lars Magna, and then we will con continue the conversation on stage. We're doing some redecorating here now. It's very efficient, Sami. I would love to also like pull this sofa a little bit in this direction. Perfect. Thank you. We have to restructure a little bit. We saw means we are like doers. We can fix this ourselves. Perfect. Then the big question is, as always, do we have do we have Lars Magnandasen with us? Live and with sound. At least live, not sure about the sound. But has there ever been like sound? Hello, Boris. Lars Magnar. Wonderful. Hey. Can, uh, uh, can he, he hear us? Yep, loud and clear. Hello, Lars Magnar. Welcome. Good to have you here. And we're looking forward to hearing your uh, presentation on Buda 2024 and the um, and, um, application process with a focus on the Sami indigenous content. The floor and uh, the room is yours. Thank you for letting me in. And thank you for inviting us from Buddha 2024. And also, uh, I must say, I was so uh, inspired by the talk from uh, Michelle, Ule and uh, Megan that I, I will end up with that uh, in the, the discussion. So maybe I, I, I will use a, a minute or two more than I, uh, <laughs> I got. And also, happy International Women's Day. Especially all the beautiful indigenous women over there. You know, you are the heartbeat that keeps ancestral communities alive. Buda 2024 is uh, it's playing with words, articulation, articulation with Arctic art, culture, and communication. The ownership is from the Nulan County and the Buda municipality. I would tell you a few of the Sami perspectives. I'm, I'm very happy that Maria, also part of the panel, she can t tell you a bit more what we are in fact doing and what's happening. A process to become an uh, European capital culture is uh, a long, it takes a long time. We started the process back in 2017 with writing an application. And we had uh, uh, starting to come into the Sami perspective. We had uh, there were a lot of discussion with institutions, organizations about general and strategic, strategic questions, like what kind of vision do we have? 
what partner organizations, how we should be organized, the main topics. For example, the Sami representation during the, this part of the process, well, all the Sami language centers in Nulan. We do have five different Sami languages in Nulan County. The Sami parliament of Norway, Norway uh, Sami festivals, uh, the North uh, University, uh, different municipalities and so forth. So in the end, the, the, the Sami, let, let you say, and the vision about the, how should the Sami be a part of this program, we, we wanted to create one common inclusive program. We didn't have an appendix like this is the indigenous part or this is the Sami part. So, uh, but also we started starting point was also as the Sami as the only acknowledged uh, indigenous people in the European Union. Maybe are not the only indigenous people in Europe, but at least the only acknowledged. And uh, to write a, uh, an application like this, you also had to follow the rules, so to speak. What is a European capital culture? There are some expectations connected to what you can do. For example, I will mention just a few one. Highlighting the common aspect of European culture, heritage and history. And also the cultural artistic content, the capacity to combine local cultural heritage and traditional art forms with new innovative and experimental cultural expressions. So it's also both a European dimension and also a local cultural dimension. When it comes to the Sami culture, our vision and strategy is to provide an inclusive reflection on our 21st century society, combining indigenous Sami culture and expression, as well as traditional and contemporary Norwegian culture. So the Sami, let's say the visions and the, the goals for, for, for Buddha 2024, the Sami, they are a big part of the program. And let's say one of the strategic objectives we had is to change the image of Nulan County, both internally and externally. And here we come into discussion, what is, how are the Sami looked upon as indigenous people and modern people? Uh, the, the diversity of the Sami cultures in Nulan County, I mentioned there were five of them, and also to address what we can call the, the Sami invisibility, both uh, in, in, in the art, on the, on the scenes, and in, in the uh, institutions, so to speak. So I have to challenge those, uh, the picture, the image of Nulan, what kind of landscape, what kind of land are we standing on? In the build-up years, uh, we do have uh, both the chair and the vice chair. I'm the vice chair of the board are Sami. We also do have some Sami competency artistic advisory board. And we also have a special agreement with the Sami, Norwegian Sami parliament. We also have recruited a full-time Sami coordinator, Maria. Uh, and we also have cooperations with uh, Sami institutions and festivals, like Oriel Sami and Teatre, who had a wonderful, uh, what do you call it? They made a wonderful show, uh, three parts of that. What we also wanted to do, we had to seek to ensure Sami dimension in all projects. That's just a ah, Sami project or so different. We do have some different Sami projects as well, but the Sami dimension is also part of the European dimensions. 2024 so far, we have an official opening, which happened uh, 3rd of February, and it was the starting point of the Sami Cultural Week and then the Sami National Day on 6th of February. So it was a lot of focus and attention on the Sami culture, both in the opening ceremony and when what happened in Buddha during that week. So we do have a Sami dimension is in integrated in main events as well as in independent programming. I guess Maria was, can say a, a little bit more about that. And this will happen and repeat uh, throughout the year. We have divided the culture year into different uh, what we call seasons. And there is quite an, a lot of attention. This is from the opening ceremony, sorry. This is from the opening ceremony, by the way, in the bay, the harbor of Buddha. 
the opening ceremony and the starting point, we had a huge public debate, both locally and in national media. And also has some international uh, focus on, uh, on us. Uh, the, the debate is, uh, we are not surprised, so to speak, because that's the time we are living in. Also in Norway, we do have this Truth and Reconciliation Committee has uh, made a report and we find what we experience, we, we can find find it there. For example, the, some mean there, are, there were too much Sami representation in the opening program. And some means there were too little Sami representation, especially from the local Sami uh, language groups and the local Sami people. But those representation issues are challenging when you are, we are producing large scale events. On what level do you do you represent, represent and so forth? And so also balancing the target groups for the opening ceremony, we also had to think about how to include uh, local indigenous Sami artists and also how to address people who are not familiar with Buddha and then this part of the world at all. This is also from, uh, from one of the uh, events during that week. What we are especially concerned about, uh, which also, also I understand this is a part of this uh, policy summit you are attending to now. What we are concerned about is this legacy, what kind of challenge what do we get out of this 2024 after we are closing the lights and locking the doors next year? First of all, all this, all this uh, program, all this number of projects, all that's happening in itself must have an effect. Uh, we are building new cultural connections, collaborations, corporations. We are building more competence and new relations to, to, uh, from different actors. In itself, this is a positive effect. But there are some challenging questions still. How will we change the image of Nulan? Uh, for example, that the criticism that there's too much Sami, the Sami is not an indigenous people. So why should they have a place in this at all? Those questions uh, coming up, how will those be more with the climate for debating the, 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 the place and the representation of the Sami in, in, in uh, happenings like this in, in, uh, in the institutions, will that change? We hope so. And furthermore, the legacy, but do we also see structural change or development? Development. What will happen after 2024? Will there still be funding for having Sami projects? Will there be funding for Sami artists, institutions and festivals? And that again opens the question of self-determination uh, versus the conditional terms that maybe we can experience. Do they presuppose uh, cooperation with Norwegian and European institutions, for example? And the other hand, what about the local and regional Sami arts institutions? Will they get fund better funding capacity, etc.? And these are questions we will address throughout the year in Buddha 24 with the owners, and also with the Sami parliament, Sami parliaments. Uh, and I just wanted to add in the end, when I was uh, so inspired from especially what Michelle said, it because exactly, I'm also a deputy member of the National Museum of Norway, also deputy member of the Arts Council. And we have ex exactly what Maria was talking about. We are discussing now at a strategic level in the National Museum. And this is, because there is a difference being like Michelle's. Sometimes I like the words, we are not so used, used to use the word decolonization, uh, reconciliation, implementation. Those words are new to us because we are in the midst of a process of using those words. So, but I do think that we, to have, Think about the Sami on a strategic level. If you start have that as a starting point, acknowledging the special place as indigenous people on strategic level in institutions, then it's different from have a starting point. You just want to show some Sami projects, representation on a cultural level, on a strategic level, acknowledging. Then you are opening questions like uh, symbolism, use of language, uh, uh, capacity building, and so forth. 
whereas on a, on, on a, a lower level, so to speak, that then we are talking about inviting some artists. And it's a whole different, it's not a different ball game, but it's a very different starting point. So that, that's where we are. We want to discuss with Buddha 2024, where at the end of the day, do we have changed on a capacity, now strategic level, how the Sami uh, institution artists are represented or are hired or what are the place after this uh, this year? So we hopefully that will have a huge impact both, uh, let's say on 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 the artist level, but especially on the strategic level. So in the years to come, th there will be no so harsh debates about the Sami representations in in uh, happenings like this, and also we can get some more funding so we can especially that the heartbeat can still keep on beating. Thank you. Thank you, Lars Magna. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation and also your, your thoughts on these important topics. Um, w will you stay on with us during this panel? I will, but I can only hear you. So <laughs> I see people doing something there. But okay. So, but I'm, I will listening to 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 this. And wonderful. If I really, really want to say something, I will make an. Uh, <laughs> you do that. Here. I can see your face on the screen. So you just uh, yeah. wave mm. if you want to say something. Mm. Thank mm. you. Um, this is extremely uh, interesting, and I have so uh, many questions um, to ask. Uh, I don't, it's almost hard to find an uh, entrance and, and find um, a starting point. But we're going to talk about the European capital of culture. We're going to talk about UMO 2014, 10 years after, and also about Buddha 2024 in an indigenous Sami perspective. And first of all, please let allow me to be a little bit critical. Uh, because f as an outsider, not being a part of these projects, and as a Sami, I must admit that I've always been a little bit curious about the whole concept of the European capital. So culture, in the indigenous perspective, um, as it celebrates European cities and European culture, which is interesting as Europe is like the mothership of colonialism. So how to find a balance where you can actually um, present or celebrate even indigenous culture during a capital culture year and still address or be mindful about at least or reflect upon the historical and ongoing uh, marginalization and, uh, and oppression. And that balance must be very difficult for, um, for the European capitals of culture in indigenous nations and also for the EU that are kind of um, assessing these applications. So um, that's a bit about my kind of uh, point of view, but Thomas first, grab a microphone. Uh, first of all, and, and briefly, um, try to explain to us where uh, did the idea of becoming a European capital of culture, where did it come from? And did it uh, in any way derive from the Sami communities in Umeå or the region? Is this yep. on? Okay. <laughs> Frankly, I didn't know what... It was a, uh, from the Umeå Theater Company. It was uh, a leader of that. He wrote a, a leader in, uh, I think, about in the beginning of 2000, that he announced that Umeå should apply to be European, cons uh, European capital of culture. And nobody take it seriously because, you know. But the discussion went on and 2005 we decided, okay, let's the mun local municipal council decided we should apply to be. And I can say from the beginning we, we met lots of questions and skepticism and not all from the rain locals in, in Umeå the residents in Umeå, from everywhere, we all also from the culture practitioner and and everybody <laughs> to, and one of the questions was uh, to, and we also met <laughs> question from Michael and the indigenous 
uh, re representatives. And we haven't even, the, when we started, we, we, we talk, what will have, what will we precedence, what will the precedence when we applied for? And okay, it was natural. The northern part of Europe, what's that? <laughs> what is the northern part? And very quickly, we, we saw that the northern part of Europe includes SAPMI. So we have to have a discussion how we introduce this. So, but it was a lot of question from the beginning on both from Umeå residents and also from Michael and others. How will we do that? So it was a long discussion. We started in 2005 and you know, so almost 10 years we did discuss this questions. I, I re recognize a lot of challenges. Absolutely. Here. Yes. And just to give us a little bit of context, if, we, if you go back to 2005 when this process started, uh, what was the kind of discourse on the Sami uh, land rights, the Sami presence, the Sami history in Umeå back then? Was it, um, was it a kind of vital discourse um, so it was very natural to, to kind of frame the Sami nation and Sami culture as a starting point for the application, or was it different? No, maybe for some of us. Um, uh, I've been living with Dave <laughs> for about 25 years who started the same as we are. Uh, some of us was, but we have a long debate about what includes and uh, all lots of questions. And Michael know that we also, in, not only the local residents, we, we also have people from the university, not in Umeå, but other university in Lund and other professors who question what have Umeå to do with Sami? Uh, there was lots of questions. What, what, what's also in, in Umeå, what's this? What, what, what do we in Umeå have to do with Sami? So we have to start this journey to acknowledge that this is natural for us, who knows, but it was very few who knows, who knows it. Did it feel like a starting point for kind of creating a new discourse on the Sami history of Umeå also? Yes, yeah. we know that. Mm. We have to do this mm. because, and we also acknowledge, we, we, we know that we will meet a lot of questioning and skepticism mm. and, and criticism also, not only from the residents, from the Sami organization and things like that, mm. but we said, okay, Let's do this because we need to have another history or another future. We have to include these all types of questions mm. that it includes. So. Mm. And um, and um, lastly, I, I I don't know if you know the details about this, but I know that you submitted the first application in two thousand eight, and then you got it back with quite harsh critique from the jury. Um, concerning the, the Sami uh, contribution and, and content of the application. And then uh, you changed it or in some way and it was uh, submitted again in 2009 and that was the application that actually was successful. So can you say something about what happened in between the first application that got critique for the Sami content and representation and the one that you actually submitted and, and succeeded with? Yes. But uh, in the, the first application was just, we don't know what to do. We just taken in lots of uh, 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 things that, what we want to do. And, uh, and uh, so it was not, so we didn't have a, a program then mm. yet. But the, as you said, the jury was the one of the first questions the jury mm. asked us from the beginning was, mm. How will you include the Sami people mm. in this application? Mm. So we have to answer that mm. question. Mm. So then we go, okay, mm. this is a question. We have to have an answer to mm. this. And mm. when we started discussion with Michael, and mm. as you know, we uh, organize, we have a Sami producer and we, t we have a, a culture committee, a little culture board with actors. Mm. Uh, um, so, so it's. Mm. It was a devel devel developed yeah. from this point. Um, and I can imagine, Mikael, that you were a kind of big part of that uh, discussion and those reflections also between um, 
2008 and, and 2009. And you were the chair of Sakya, the Sami Association, when the application was submitted. So tell us a little bit about uh, the inv involvement of the Sami community and artists in this phase of the project. Yes, as, uh, as you said, Thomas said uh, also, um, it was not anchored um, the first application in the Sami society. Mm. So uh, for us, for me as a chair and for our board in the Sami, local Sami association, we had to make a choice. Are we going in this project mm. to make it anchored and real and good? As, as much as we could mm. help the process? Or should we stay out of it? So there was a strategic decision. What can we win to be part of this? And what can we lose? Mm. So it was a kind of a tricky decision for us as a local Sami association to take. Mm. But we, in a way, was fearless in that case. We, we had more to win uh, because, as we all understand, the, the knowledge of Sami history, the Swedish colonial history, and the contemporary Sami society is very low in this country. Mm. And that's not the people's own fault. It's, uh, there is no education in school mm. still mm. about this. So, <clears throat> the non-knowledge is reproduced every, every year in the schools. Mm. So the numbers that we give knowledge, they will <laughs> be... The newcomers who don't know a thing will be more. Mm. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a job. Mm. It's a lifetime job. But uh, the... That was, uh, that was a very important uh, decision to anchor it in the Sami society with the Sami organization, of course, the Sami parliament, mm. and this and that, to make it um, anchored in the Sami society. That was mm. a crucial point. Mm. The next step was changing the organizational structure within the project. It was a municip municipality run organization, so it wasn't that easy. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't a project by itself. It was inside the municipality. That was a choice mm -hmm. you, you took. And did you manage to change the project uh, structures? Yes, we uh, <laughs> eventually. Um, In what way? Yeah, uh, first, it was a part-time uh, producer, uh, Sami producer, then it was doubled and then it was tripled. Mm. So we got more and more um, s producers with Sami competence within the organization. Mm. The, the, the other thing was, and I think, I have to say, I, th I think it was my idea <laughs> that we connected a Sami artistic board to the organization mm. to look into all projects mm. that said or wanted to touch on the Sami culture. Mm. In, so we... we An advisory board. An advisory mm. board. We, so we stopped some uh, projects that wasn't mm. grounded at all. Mm. It was just using the Sami culture as uh, something mm. uh, interesting. Mm. And um, this is so interesting because I'm, uh, I'm also wondering, were you, was it ever like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, if you see what I mean? Was it ever like we have to participate because we, if we don't participate, it will still happen, uh, but then without us? So you're like, uh, but participating could also mean to not make it perfectly or not, you know, um, succeed in changing the structures, actually getting uh, genuine, uh, um, you know, uh, decision making from, an, from a sound point of view, and so on and so forth. Were you ever afraid? Did you ever, like, 
sense that feeling of damned if you do and damned if you yeah, don't. Yeah, but starting from <clears throat> the level of zero, it's easy to go a little bit up. <laughs> so it wasn't that uh, I wasn't afraid, totally afraid of this. And the good thing with Umeå, it's a very open city across the cultural institutions. It's a lot of good people in, in important positions. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the, the collaboration on the cultural sector in Umeå is very, very good. So we have to remember that this week, and we have the 25th time, mm. it already had been going on for seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were already established festival uh, with the help of the municipality. And what happened when we stepped in, we got some extra money, right? So this was a win situation mm. for, for doing this mm. also. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, concerning email 2014, when you're here, Lars Magna, I just wanted to ask you also, um, were Buddha inspired by UMO in any way in your work with the, with the application and the kind of setup of the, of the project? Did you, did you examine how they worked with the indigenous involvement and representation in any way? Oh, yes, we, we did. Uh, and also, because Fredrik Lindegren, he was the leader of the cultural administration for for Umeå. He's part of the board of Buddha 2024. So we had direct experience in the board as well. Yeah, we studied it and we, and we learned some lessons there about representation and in inclusion. So um, I think also there's a lot of water that, what do you call it? Uh, since then from, from Umeå, both in Norway and Sweden since then, at least in Norway, right now, both the Buddha municipality and the Nuland County has that's where we give what you say, some inclusion on the strategic level. What we like in Norway is the implementation, mm. what the truth, the common truth and reconciliation committee calls implementation gap. Mm. The funding is lacking, mm. but the visions are there. Mm. So, so this for us, this was a window of opportunity mm. to, to, okay, this is a chance to, to maybe to, to address uh, the, the situation for the some institutions, for the some local some artists. Mm. And maybe this is a platform we can do something. So that's why we also really, I, I spent a lot of time during 2017, 18 to lobby for the Sami parliament to be a part of this, uh, which the, in the end they did. I'm very happy for that. But yes, but we learned from Umeå, that's the mm. main, main mm. point. And, and I also want to, and I want to ask you as well, Mikael, but also uh, Lars Magna, because one thing I, I also find very kind of potentially challenging with this, uh, with this project is the kind of sense of accountability uh, in the relations between the, the European Capital of Culture administration and leadership and the Sami um, uh, communities. And as a part of the official program of UMO 2014 and as a Sami collaborator, was there any like safety net or mechanisms to ensure accountability if indigenous perspectives and concerns were disregarded or misrepresented in the planning and execution of the um, UMO 2014 year? You asking me? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I mentioned um, the Sami Artistic Board is mm was an important tool to reassure re that um, there was uh, not any, uh, you know, uh, kitsch going on using the mm. Mm. So, and that was important. But I think uh, it was a, also a, like a, a learning experience for the administration that we came in with our perspectives. Uh, so there was lecturing going on, as we Sami all know, we have to lecture very often. And we did that 
uh, in different ways inside the organization. And we made also a special day about Sami culture in Stockholm for all the national authorities mm. uh, that, we that we fixed from the Sami artistic board and the producers. So, you know, we, uh, of course, we understood that we have to educate as at the same time. So that's, um, that's <laughs> it's a, a little bit exhausting, but as we all know, we all Sami knows, that's a part of uh, the daily work, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, and it's not the people, they don't have the knowledge, it's not their faults. It's, it's the structural conditions of schooling, the whole mm. society. Mm. So I would say a reflection to Lars Magne and Maria with Bude. I think in a way you have taken absolutely steps concerning how Umeå 2014 was since you are in the board, for instance. Um, Eilie Keskitol, the former president of the Sami Parliament, Parliament in Norway, and you, Lars Magne, who is experienced in, in so many cultural fields and language and so on. So I think that this is very, they, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a step um, towards something. Yeah. But finally, I want to say something here, uh, so I don't forget. Is that okay? That's, uh, I think um, something happened locally during the journey of Umeå 2014. Absolutely. And even regionally, now we have a, a now we have Vermico, that's in a way a, a child of, uh, not directly, but mm. you understand mm. I indirectly from what happened here um, in 2014. So there's, there's a, uh, like a journey we who are who are working with Sami culture in different ways, to be a partner on the regional le level, we are getting there now, but the national level. Mm. So hard to change structures there. Mm. And remember, Norway has signed ELO 169. That's it's a convention, not a declaration of indigenous rights. Mm. Sweden has not. not. Mm. And that is a big, big difference. Mm. Uh, they, in Norway, they have eight to ten times more money to, into the cultural sector compared to Sweden. Mm. We have this small 17 million Swedish crown every year for the total Sami cultural mm. sector. Still the same condition on the national level. Mm. Uh, I do agree. It's a very, very different premises for the development of Sami culture in Sweden and Norway. But Maria, I want to, to also um, bring the same question on accountability to, to you, actually, because I'm extremely kind of interested in that. Um, they will turn it on. Um, I'm interested in who, kind, who takes care of the Sami artists when the shit hit the fan. Um, because I so often experience that uh, national institutions and non-indigenous initiatives want to present Sami artists to create a, a discourse, a debate, or artistic representation. And when, again, the shit hits the fan, the Sami artist is always kind of left alone and has to stand, uh, gets all the critique, the hatred, the racism, uh, and there is no accountability, there is no one you know, um, that takes responsibility for that. You always, we always have to stand uh, alone in that. And I, I truly find that as an important question also concerning the European capitals of culture because you want to, of course, uh, reflect and represent uh, SAPMI, uh, the land you're on, uh, the culture um, and the communities. But if there is any as I said, uh, misrepresentation or disregard, who will fix it? That is a really hard question to answer because it is so um, complicated. It's so many, many answers to that in a way. I think 
To be honest, I think um, not just the artists, but our communities as a whole, our us as individuals, Samis, and our communities needs to be really strong sometimes. Like it's, as you say, when, <laughs> when it is like a total storm around us, we don't really have any choice. We just have to stand in it. Mm -hmm. There isn't really anybody there to, except from ourselves. And then after the, to be honest, for me, I, just to, to use the example of our opening, it was like um, too much Sami uh, content for some people. Mm -hmm. So the first, the first um, storm that comes then is really harsh. Mm. And then you, you get both Sami uh, community people from the Sami communities and also uh, other people, mm. non-Sami people, are, you know, the discussion becomes a little bit more nuanced. And then you kind of feel like that is kind of where you got to grab your straws of like, okay, so there is some support also mm. for our, our artists, for our communities, I think. It's a hard position to be in mm. to fight for your rights as we have mm. to do. Mm. So I'm not really sure how to answer that. There isn't really a safety net that will kind of catch us, except mm. from, from, you know, if you're if you're lucky enough to have a community to to mm. go to that will understand. I think. Mm. And but also, what about the organization? How did the organization respond? Was it the safety net? Was it mechanisms that could could be? accountable when when this happened depending on who who you who needs to be who needs to to be taken care of if you understand mm. just to say for myself mm. the day after the opening uh, i met with Lars Magne and and Aili mm. and also the uh, Sami board members yes mm. and also um um, the leaders above me in, in the organization, mm. just to have like a debrief, mm. because it was really hard to sit and listen to all of this, and get all of this. You, mm. you kind of, it's so strange because you kind of, it's a shock and it's also something that you you knew would happen. So mm. it's a, it, both are true at the same time. Mm. You knew this would happen mm. in a way, or at least it felt like this. Mm. It's it's both are are are, you know. Uh, true, even though they are opposites. Yeah. And, and just to go give the, the audience that uh, haven't seen it a little bit of context, the fact that the, the Sami artist Ella Maria Hatta Isak and the, the opening ceremony of Buddha 2024, um, and she opened her coat and it said, this is Sami land with large white letters. And for Buddha, th that was a shock. Uh, and of course, the big discussion was also about what, what do you mean this is not Sami land? We did, uh, how can you say that? And so on and so forth. And then the, all the critique about too much Sami content. And it was a terrible, terrible discussion, so just to add some context. Yeah, but also I think, it, yeah, it's, in a way, it's really terrible to stand in it and, and look at, to be honest, with like the, the pure racism mm. that comes. Mm. But also, I must say, Okay, so it's a really hard discussion, but it's also a really important discussion because we are on Sami land. So, mm -hmm. how to, mm -hmm. like, this discussion obviously needed to be had then, since mm -hmm. we are not agreeing on this. Mm -hmm. So, I think, okay, it's really hard to stand. Some, uh, to be honest, like, some, some of the people I spoke to afterwards was like, I'm so sorry that you have to go through this. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of where we are right now. Mm. We don't really have any choice. We kind of have to stand mm. in this. Mm. We have to. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that the, the discussion kind of happened because it's mm. obviously there. It's like mm. not to take it. It would be to say that, okay, so we just close our eyes to what's mm. obviously there. Sometimes mm. when I walk around in my Gakti in Buddha, you get comments, you're scared. I always have to like take on my Gakti and I also have to take on a shield. Like, and most comments are, are positive, I must say, to be, like, that is also true. But the ones that are scary are so scary. Mm. And you're so, like, especially when later at night when people have been drinking or whatever, then you're kind of, 
you're actually scared. Mm. We are still there. Mm. So we kind of need to acknowledge that. Mm. So that's just how it is. And, and speaking of that, going back to the very f kind of starting point for this discussion, uh, as the Sami coordinator uh, in Buda 2024, how do you reflect on how the European capitals of culture can combine the celebration of indigenous arts and culture with the sheer fact that racism, marginalization and oppression uh, is still ongoing um, to a certain degree. And also there's a big political struggle about indigenous and Sami rights um, and land rights, of course, especially. So is, that, is it like even possible to, to combine? Um, and does that, that broad picture and that broad representation of the Sami, does it have a kind of space within the framework of the European capital culture? Well, we kind of have to believe that. That's why I work. I, I, I wouldn't be able to work in it if I didn't believe in, in the possibility of, uh, as you said, both of you really said, like, uh, you, can, you can choose not to participate and say that it's impossible, but then you kind of lose the spotlight. And I'm happy about it. I'm happy about uh, the discussion coming up then. So, because it's obviously needed. So, I think one of the best ways we can give the stage to a true representation is giving the stage to Sami um, institutions, mm -hmm. telling our stories, what we need to talk about, like what we want to tell our stories, how, how we want to tell them. So, you will have different levels of kind of <laughs> Sami involvement, if mm. you say. Like if we could have like total representation through, through, uh, through and through Sami um, organizations mm. or, or institutions like, like the Oriel Sami and Theater or, or uh, ISPI, mm. for example. Mm. Or uh, you can have some Sami involvement like, like what we are doing, me and Lars Magne mm. and Naili, mm. within Buddha 2024, it's not a true and true Sami organization, but it is, we are represented and mm. we do our work within mm. the organization and we have our perspectives um, based on both our experiences as, mm. to be honest, to be mostly based on our experiences of being Sami. Mm. And then you have other organizations or like events or, or happenings during the years year that isn't totally, like, you want some Sami influence at least. So it won't be true and true, or it won't be partly, but it will be at least something. Mm. So I think you kind of have to see it in different levels, yeah, levels mm. of how much Sami involvement it will be. But mm. uh, the best answer would be, I hope that giving the stage to Sami institutions that wants to tell the stories about what we as a society needs to talk mm. about and set it on the agenda and also kind of mm, give this view, point of view to a larger audience, mm. both nationally, like locally in Bode area and Norland, and then in like our, the nation of Norway. Mm. And then you have also ex like the international point of view, because mm. I think we can get some support there too mm. for our, I think it's a mm. good way of um, going forward, yeah. Absolutely, thank you, Maria. <coughs> uh, Michelle, um, just listening in to this, uh, this discussion and these perspectives on European capitals of culture, and from a Canadian perspective, uh, what would you think would be the key measures to secure uh, equitable indigenous contribution and self-determination in the planning and execution of these large non-indigenous-led um, representations and initiatives? Big question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm partly absorbing and, and also learning. Uh, I haven't had the, the privilege to be here and participate uh, during these festivals, but I do recognize the challenges, especially, um, you know, what was being spoken about, the, the reactions from people. And I, I think those are, are very important to address. Um, you know, I think it's, it's an experience I, I can relate to as an Indigenous person, as an Indigenous woman in particular. Um, I think it's exciting, and thank you for mentioning National uh, Women's Day. I, I 
kind of forgot about it. <laughs> but I'm like, oh yeah, so I think it's important to also recognize that I know there's a uh, policy or um, report coming out today about violence against mm -hmm. uh, Indigenous women here, and I, I think that's really important to, to think about as well, and to think about our roles, uh, even within our communities as, as women, and um, you know all the work that is done not only to, to birth and, and raise uh, communities, but uh, the importance our voices are in these types of discussions mm -hmm. that probably have been overlooked um, more more than they mm -hmm. should have. Um, but I think what I'm hearing is is the the ingrained racism that can come out, mm -hmm. and you know it, it's good to to ensure self care and, and protection in those circumstances and to have community. So I think part of of ensuring things are done in a good way, in a respectful way, is especially for non-Indigenous organizations who are trying to create change and and inclusion and diversity in, in the programming that you're doing is making sure there's more than one of us at the table. Mm. So there is that solidarity mm. and that support. Um, so I think that uh, the multitude of voices, both from within SAPMI, from the different regions, but also international support, I think that's very key. Um, and that's a responsibility I think organizers have, uh, indigenous or otherwise, to ensure the, the care of, of the people, um, recognizing the, the current state of, of culture and, and cultural reception that you know, is unfortunate, um, but it is something that we still have to deal with and, and different countries are, are at different stages of, of those relations and that learning and, and relearning. Um, so I think that's key, is, is, is presence. Um, and also not just of, of a multitude of indigenous voices, um, which should include you know, representation from different geographical areas here, but also um, you know, emerging to established voices, mm -hmm. making sure you have the, the elders and the knowledge keepers, mm -hmm. young and old, participating in these discussions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, teaching uh, from example, right? Like, like how we can have um, these conversations and, and right relations. Uh, and a key to that are these non-Indigenous organizations uh, allyship. Um, that's something that's integral and extremely necessary mm -hmm. is for those who are in those positions, for those who are in those positions of power, um, who have the, the potential to create change, to you know, impact policies, funding, to, to continue to advocate for, um, but also in collaboration with. Mm -hmm. I, here it seems like it's in a process of consulting with community, mm -hmm. which is, is very important. Mm -hmm. That's how it began in Canada as well. Mm -hmm. We've kind of moved beyond that to a little bit more active, mm. you know, um, collaboration. Mm. To now, what we're trying to do, even at the National Gallery, the creation of, of the department, creating sovereign spaces, is really about the handing over of mm. space, exactly. so that those, you know, not, nothing about us mm. without us, mm. um, and to ensure, you know, as, as I quoted from from the UNDRIP, one of the clauses there is, is the rights for people to speak for themselves, mm. of themselves. Mm. Um, and contribute and, and have authority over the things that are impacting your mm. lives. Mm. Um, so I have lots of thoughts. I don't know if that yeah, answered the question. Me too. But and it, uh, it, it's so inspiring. Um, and I uh, would love to, to dig even deeper into what you're talking about right now. But time is flying and we're having uh, lunch. But I want to, to kind of um, uh, end up with uh, with our um, kind of a future uh, perspective uh, in a way. Mikal, um, I know that you have been advocate, uh, advocating for the Arctic Art Summit in Sweden, um, not as an alternative to the European Capitals of Culture in any way, but also as a kind of a different kind of international tool. Um, uh, if you want to elaborate just super briefly on, on how you see that uh, concept in an indigenous perspective. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, Autogard Summit is a totally different starting point. It's from 
uh, it's centered from the, in the indigenous perspective. So that's a totally different starting point com compared to a European capital culture. So, um, so we in the Sami cultural sector now, today, are very, very interested to try that big, large-scale international mm -hmm. culture pro project here in Sweden. Uh, we still, uh, uh, we know that there, are, there is a big interest from the northern regions, mm. as we heard uh, the county governor said uh, in the beginning. And we know that um, it's, it has to be funded also on the national level with the fantastic big amount of one million Swedish crowns. And it hasn't, still that hasn't happened. So, I just want to, from uh, the Sami cultural sector, I'm, I'm the chair of uh, Giron Sami Theater, and I'm also the vice chair of Vermeco, <laughs> and you know, so many hats. But <clears throat> and we, has started to think to show agency uh, from ourselves to the national level that we are mm, we are starting to think of getting our last drops of money because of we know the immense importance of indigenous projects that the indigenous run. So we are thinking about trying to get our last drops of money, small drops, and together and challenge the state. If we give if we, we can come up with this, can you come up with the rest, right? So that is what we are thinking about to help the state to take this big decision of one million Swedish crowns. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Mikael. Um, the very last question, Thomas, for you. Uh, before we have to go to lunch, we're all hungry, um, I imagine. But I just wanted to know, also after hearing this and, and hopefully maybe as an inspiration for Buddha, is it anything that you would have done differently uh, when you look back now, 10 years after? Yes, it's lots of things, but <laughs> you can change the history, but you can change the future. Absolutely. As you know, but because we have, a, as you said, we have a long history mm. of naturalism. Don't forget it, uh, hundreds of years of naturalism. And it's not includes the minority or the Sami people in this naturalism, you know. My parents come from Tornedal, and I, my mother, she was forbidden to speak his own language mm. at school. And you know, uh, nobody knows this. Mm. They start to know this. <laughs> so, so we talk about it now. But for 10 years ago, when I tell them, mm. everybody, this is not true. Mm. Because it's a long, long history, and that's I, I agree, agree with you. You have, to, you have to take this kind of discussions. You have to. Okay, we will meet racism and criticism and everything, but we have to do it. So this is my last meaning. Keep on fighting, because we need it. <laughs> also on the natural level. Wonderful last words, keep on fighting, because we need it. And with that, I would like to say thank you to Mikael, Thomas, Maria and Michelle, or Lars Magne digitally. And yeah, give them a round of applause, please. And uh, after lunch, we will uh, look forward and actually look to the future and see what we can do with the upcoming European capitals of culture. But now, good people, it's lunch. And this will happen in a certain manner. You have to reflect on whether you want fish, meat or vegan food. You go and find yourself a table and then you register your number on the table. You go to the bar and you order the lunch and it will be brought to your table. It's a brilliant 
concept. There is also some water and something to drink there in the back, and you can also buy other things from the bar if you would like that. And we will meet here at 1 o'clock. But before, before, before no. we... I just want to say thank you to our panel panelists and to Megan. And we have some chocolate if you have to wait long in the line. And it's flavored by herbs that you find in the forests here around. We have fadno, kvanne. It pr it's good for the immune systems, viruses. We have blueberries, sirje, that is good for the eyes, good sight. And um, we have jegge, mörtjem, kvanne, good for the urinary system. <laughs> good to get rid of poison. You get free from bad things. And then we have sarva urtse. That is anti-inflammatory if you get a fever. And actually, Megan, you will not be on here again, so you will have for your eyes blueberry. And that was Siri. The Umesami name. So I named the forest and thank you for your presentations. And now it's lunch. But give your hands to the panel again. <laughs>